time to time our customers will come to us with a paper not their own, uh, wishing to know how it is put together, what is in it. Um, essentially what they want is a competitive analysis of the material. In this case we have a paper which is uh, photographic quality. It clearly has a very good coating on the site. It's very flexible, fairly stiff, fairly thick. And if the customer would like to know what kind of binders are being used, what kinds of fillers are used in the paper, and it's clearly coated, what kind of coating are they using. And um, common practice for me to determine what kind of filler or coating is to cut a cross-section of this material. Uh, the easiest and best way to do that is with a straight edge razor blade. We will cut our sample into an appropriate size and very often simply cutting it at room temperature, uh, bearing straight through with a very sharp, fresh blade is adequate. If that is not, uh, the material also can be chilled uh, with liquid nitrogen or close to that temperature and then by placing a clean blade over the material, we can simply just tap it with a hammer and we cut a very clean, cleavable surface, which is almost microtone quality. So once the material has been cut, we can mount it vertically so that we can view it on edge and um, identify the various layers. Once the sample has been prepared, in this case that means we've cut the cross section and mounted it so that the edge is vertical. And it is then carbon coated because it needs to be electrically conductive to work to be imaged properly in the electron microscope. Then it is ready to be placed in the microscope. The sample is fully mounted in the microscope and we have it oriented so that we are looking on the edge view. Uh, we can then acquire our images, not just for structure, but we can also then examine the sample for um, compositional differences in the material. This is a secondary electron image of the sample. It is very good for uh, looking at topography. It shows us a great level of detail about the material. In this case, we can see that there is a, a, a dense layer along the top, and there is porosity within the sheet, and then there is some sort of a layer along the bottom. What we're really interested in, however, is the composition. We know that this material has mineral fillers in it, and in that case, we really want what we would call a composition image. The same area of the material examined with what we call backscatter electrons. These give us information about um, the, the molecular weight or shall we say atomic density of different parts of the sample. So we have dark areas which are either voids or very light atomic weight materials such as wood pulp which is primarily hydrocarbon material. But it also shows us that there's a mineral content to this material especially along the top surface, just below the surface and then again a very thin layer along the very bottom. The next question, however, is um, what are those materials? And here we employ what is called the X-ray detector that is attached to the scanning electron microscope. This image clearly shows us that there is a compositional or atomic number difference in the material, especially at the top and at the bottom. But what we want to know even further is what are the elements present in each of those areas. Here we employ the X-ray detector that is attached to the microscope and we can probe those areas to identify the elements present and actually go a step further than that and not only identify the elements but we can map their presence. So we use the X-rays that are uh, emitted from the sample. We can plot the X-rays that are detected and identify the elements from which those X-rays came. In this case we have a, a spectrum of the X-rays from the coating of this paper, and we see that it is very high in aluminum and silicon, uh, modest amount of calcium, and a very, very small peak of titanium. And of course, there's oxygen and carbon associated with this as well. This tells us that there's a kale and clay associated with the, with the, the coating, as well as some calcium carbonate and a small amount of titanium dioxide, um, all of which are used to make the paper opaque, bright, and white. Now that we know what elements are present in the material, it is nice to know which elements are where in the sample. In other words, how are, the, are these components, namely the calcium carbonate, the kale and clay, distributed throughout the sheet? So we can, in that sense, plot the x-rays relative to location. In other words, we can create an elemental map of the material. After we identify the elements that we are interested in, 
in this case silicon and aluminum, which represent the kaolin clay, and the calcium, which represents the calcium carbonate. We can then map the surface of this material for the, for the specific x-rays relating to those three elements. So in this case, we have a map of calcium, a map of silicon, and a map of aluminum. And then we are able to false color, colorize those three maps and then combine them into one. So in the upper left, you see that the green and the blue, which represent silicon and aluminum res respectively, produce a magenta color. And, and in this case, they are simultaneously in the same places, which of course would be because they are from the same mineral, the kaolinite. We can clearly tell that we have t the kaolin clay layer on the top. In fact, there are two layers of kaolin clay and then a single layer of kaolin clay on the bottom. The red dots represent a calcium carbonate. Indeed, there is some calcium carbonate in the top layer. It is very likely that the, that the red dots in the middle of the sample are simply background noise, but they may represent a small amount of filler within the paper, uh, the calcium carbonate filler.